Hello everybody. I like to pick up the subject negative resistance again because it seems to be a bit controversial and got a bit of feedback which is um, um, not at all in related to the subject. I want to show you how you can create negative resistance. What is the benefit of negative resistance? What are the, what are the conditions under which negative resistance um, happens. Here I have an example from Wikipedia. Negative resistance on Wikipedia defines the uh, circumstances that voltage is dropping under load. However, that's only one example. It also says that there are no electronic components on the market and that there is a theoretical value. However, it says that tunnel directs do inherit that phenomenon. What I can experience, <coughs> what I would display and show to you is that under load conditions the current is dropping and that there is an, an, a fluctuation, an oscillation happening between load and between input uh, resonance frequency which is then resulting in the negative resistance wave. Let's just say your system is consuming 100 watt of power. And when you add load to that system, let's say a, a light bulb or a motor of 100 watt, and all of a sudden this 100 watt is not consumed anymore, all of a sudden you consume only 50 watt of power. You have seen that thousands of times all around the world in videos and, and definitions. Whenever you connect a load, current is reduced. So let me demonstrate that here with one of my systems I had before used as example for Tesla coils. So we are using here again as a little replication or part of the systems I used as my large bipolar Tesla coil. Here I'm using my small one. I use also the bipolar winding and also important I need to have a load balance here asymmetrical arranged between the primary and the secondary. I go then again into my capacitor and that gives me a frequency of 195 kilohertz. I have then connected it to ground and then on the other side you see then my diode and I use a little 10 centimeter ferret um, coil and measures the performance. So at first I take that bit here off and let's um, measure power requirement and the voltage gain in the system. So I start now the power. So the DMM is connected at the moment already at the pickup system. So you might pick up the ambient radiation and will change the settings but we can ignore that for a second. It's not directly connected. It's just with a ferret and only getting the RF and it's converting that. Let's start it up. So that's how the wave looks like. Let me adjust it a bit. So this is now, you see, 600 milliampere at 9 volt. I get 1.5 kilovolt here measured. The wave doesn't look very, very good. It has some ripple. So at the moment, the coil is not connected to anything. It's just free. Uh, um, resonating if you want. I connect now the ground directly and see how that looks like. So the ground is now directly connected on the negative or let's say on the south pole side of um, the secondary coil. You see it is increasing the potential from, from ground is higher now so I get more energy of the system. The current is slightly lower. My waveform looks nice now. So that is a that is a traditional setup for a radio or an antenna system directly connected to crowd. Now let's see how we can change this waveform. Let me connect the load now. You can see briefly here, okay, I have here red the rectifier section here in the middle. I have the 10 centimeter coil, it's just 
a standard coil it's not a bifilar coil just a standard coil and some um, transformer um, functions here with the standard larger coil outside with less windings and that goes via the rectifier system into again my microwave oven um, capacitor now let's look how that looks like on the scope and on the DMM this is now you see that the current has dropped by uh, a lot however the waveform is retarded as you can see here it's hardly any 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 peak values available anymore and I'm charging the capacitor only up to 52 53 volt um, now let's change that let's get the spark gap going before I do the spark gap I just removed the uh, connectivity directly to ground so the ground is open again so just free floating if you want connecting to the load and as you can see I'm back to my 600 milliampere but my waveform looks like it was looking before however um, here on my output side is uh, drastically reduced now let's get uh, sparked on the connectivity to the ground I have used small GDTs I will show that to you in a second I have also reduced now um, the voltage you can see here 7.5 volt now instead of 9 volt and you see only a third of power instead of 600 milliampere only 200 milliampere from 50 volt up to 150 volt is three times the value let me stop that to show you the waveform here you go here you have your classical waveform here you have your classical negative waveform which happens only under that condition only when you spark in a specific way when you adjust the frequency correctly then you will have this kind of phenomena so I saved about as um, two-thirds of power and I gained about 300% of power because I'm charging the voltage here up in the capacitor and the capacitor is my load that means it can store the energy and when I have 50 volt up to 150 volts it's three times the amount of power I can store uh, on the same capacitor so I hope you did uh, pay attention about the details and that concludes my um, experiment with a different setup of um, a coil system and creating negative resistance. Thank you very much. Until the next video.